Hello everyone. Welcome back to Scripture Union Uganda's Values Education class. This is episode number three. And I'm very sure that you've been learning a lot. Um, today, our topic is purity makes right choices. So I have a question I would like to ask you. How daring are you? When someone dares you, they are usually asking you to do something you would not normally do. For instance, what would you say if I dared you to drink a glass of poison? Sit on a chair that is on fire. I dare you to pour boiling water over yourself. How about if I told you to drop acid into your eye? Would you do any of those things I've told you to do? Hmm. I'm sure you would say no to all of these. There's, why would you say no? Right, because you know that terrible harm would come to your body and even permanent disability. Our lesson today on the value of purity is about something even more devastating than these dares. And Satan, who is God's enemy, makes it look fun and enticing. But if you accept his dares, your life may be permanently damaged. This particular dare is the one of premarital sex, which is sex before marriage. You should say no to this dare and not fall into this temptation. Our values promise today is not so popular, but it is God's standard for us and God is loving and wise. So let's read our values promise together. I will choose to say no to sex before marriage. We'll say that again. I will choose to say no to sex before marriage. Well, our values promise today is closely related to the seventh commandment. Let's read it in Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. I hope you brought your Bible to class. So we'll open our Bibles in Exodus chapter 20, verse 14. And this is what it says. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not commit adultery. What is adultery? Adultery is when a married person has sex with someone who is not their husband or wife. The Bible makes it very, very clear that only a man and a woman who are married to each other should engage in sex. Any sex outside of marriage is breaking God's seventh commandment. Do you remember today's values promise? We need to say it again. So this is how it goes. I will choose to say no to sex before marriage. So we're going to look at a story, very interesting story in the Bible found in the Old Testament, which tells us about a young man who made a right choice and followed our values promise today. Are you ready for our story? I hope you are. So you remember Joseph? the one who was sold into slavery by his brothers. Slaves are people who work very, very, very hard. They are not treated well, and they don't get paid for their hard work. That was Joseph's life. God was with Joseph when he was sold into the household of Potiphar. Potiphar was a very important man in Egypt. But do you know what? One thing about Joseph, even as he was a slave in the house of Potiphar, the Bible says that everything that Joseph did prospered. Why did it prosper? It prospered because God was with him. And as a result of this, Potiphar put him in charge of everything in his house. So Joseph was honest, he was hardworking, and also there's something else the Bible says about Joseph. This is very interesting. The Bible says that Joseph was a very handsome man, he was a very handsome young man, and eventually someone noticed. The Bible says that Potiphar's wife noticed that Joseph was very handsome. Then what did she begin to do? She then began to tempt Joseph to have sex with her. Let's read in the Bible and see what happened next. How did, how did Joseph respond when she was asking him to do this? Open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 39, 
verses 9 to 10. Open your Bible to Genesis chapter 39, verses 9 to 10. Are you ready? Okay, let's read. This was Joseph's response. He, he told Potiphar's wife, No one is greater in this house than I. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her. He always said no. So, a few questions I would like to ask you, just from that verse. How many times did Potiphar's wife ask Joseph to go to bed with her? Not once, not twice, but every day. Every day she pestered Joseph to go to bed with her. And the Bible says that Joseph always said, no, no, no. Why did he refuse? He did not want to sin against God. And she was already married to somebody else. Joseph followed our values. Promise. Let's repeat it. I will choose to say no to sex before marriage. That is exactly what Joseph did. He was also obeying the seventh commandment, which says, you shall not commit adultery. So let's continue with our story. One day, when Joseph was all alone in the house, Potiphar's wife noticed this and decided to take her chance. So let's read what happened in our story. Let's read again in Genesis chapter 39, verse 12, and see what happened next when she found Joseph alone in the house. Okay, the Bible says at that point, she caught him by his cloak and said, come to, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. She tried to force Joseph into bed with her, but he ran away, leaving his cloak behind. Do you know what? It would have been very easy for Joseph to fall into this temptation because there was no one at home. It could have been their secret. But you know what? There is one person you can never hide anything from. Sometimes we want to do things in secret and we think nobody knows. But God always knows. And Joseph knew this. So Joseph feared God more than he feared Potiphar's wife or anyone else. He chose to resist sin. He is an excellent example of what our values promise says. We'll say it again. I will choose to say no to sex before marriage. And also our seventh commandment which says, you shall not commit adultery. So how about you? In what kind of ways are you being tempted, just like Joseph was? Maybe your friends all have boyfriends and girlfriends and you're thinking, I should also have a boyfriend. I should also have a girlfriend. Maybe you're, you already have a girlfriend or you have a boyfriend and your boyfriend is urging you to have sex with him. Maybe your friends at school all have boyfriends or girlfriends and you feel, I should also get a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Or you're saying, me, I already have a boyfriend or I already have a girlfriend and they are urging you to have sex with them. Is there someone who is frequently touching you and tempting you into sin? Maybe you're saying, ah, oh, for me, I need money. And I'm being tempted to sin because of money. I need money. And then uh, maybe you're saying that, ah, uh, for me, I need, I need to feel this experience of sex. I want to get the, the experience. Now, boys and girls, how you react to these pressures is your choice. You can either go and do what is not right, and your life will end in failure, or choose the right way, and your life will end in success. It is all your choice. Although our values promise is not popular at all, it is the best choice you will ever make. Let's repeat it together. I will choose to say no to sex before marriage. If you follow our values promise, you will also be obeying the seventh commandment, which says, you shall not commit adultery. 
Open your Bible with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Let's see what God's word says about sexual immorality. Are you there? It says, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. That's what God's word is saying. So it said something about sexual immorality. That word is coming back again. What is sexual immorality? Sexual immorality is any sexual activity outside of marriage. Any sexual activity outside of marriage is considered immoral before God. And it includes premarital sex. Premarital sex is sex before marriage. Extramarital sex is sex outside of your marriage. Then we have pornography. Then we have masturbation. We have homosexuality, lesbianism, speciality, sex, toys, and so many others. All those before God are considered sexual sin. Those are immoral things that God says we should not engage ourselves in. So I have a question I want to ask you. According to this verse that we have just read, how should we respond to sexual immorality? According to this verse, we should respond to sexual immorality by fleeing. How can we run away from sexual immorality? How can you do that? There are so many things you can do. We've already talked to you about giggle. You remember Uncle Paul when he talked about giggle? Garbage in, garbage out. Watch out what you are feeding your mind, okay? Watch out what kind of friends you have. If your friends are leading you into sin, tell them that no, we are not supposed to go in that direction. And if they don't listen to you, you can stop being friends with someone who wants you to do the wrong thing. Why is sexual immorality considered a serious sin before God? Sexual immorality is a serious sin because all other sins affect outside the body. But sexual sin affects the body itself. Sometimes people think that God is against sex and does not want people to enjoy it. But just the opposite is true. God himself planned sex to be a beautiful thing for a husband and wife relationship. God knows what is best for you. He asks you to keep yourself pure because he loves you and wants you to experience the best life possible. If you choose to follow our values promise, despite what others think to say, you will discover that God's way is the best way, it's the best choice. So what will you choose? What will you choose? Is it Satan's lie that God wants to, to spoil your fun? Or will you choose God's truth that remaining pure will give you great peace and, and joy, especially on your wedding day? The choice is yours. Let's repeat our values promise. I will choose to say no to sex before marriage. I will choose to say no to sex before marriage. Our friends are on again with the purity song. And when they are done, we will be back and then we will close with a prayer. Making the right choice is not easy, but with God's help, everything is possible. So you are going to repeat this prayer after me. You say, Dear God, I need your grace to protect me 
from sinning. Please help me to obey you by waiting until marriage for sex. Help me remain pure in all aspects. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you have learned a lot. I'm looking forward to spending time with you again in the next episode. Bye-bye. Sexual immorality. Check the